So in this video, I want to talk about how to have a conversation with a potential client. So um, the way we are typically taught for sales conversations is some version of the pain island, pleasure island methodology. Uh, basically, your potential client is currently in pain, right, in, in the way that your business can help them solve. And then they have a dream to have a different life, a different situation with whatever your business helps them solve. We call that the pleasure island, right? Now they're in pain. They've got the symptoms that your business can help with, and they dream of the pleasure island, the, the, the destination that your business can help them get to. And in the sales conversation, you're basically supposed to uh, help them see that your business is the boat between pain island and pleasure island. You are the boat, so therefore they must sign, sign up with you, get on your boat, you know, go from pain to pleasure island. Now, that, actually, that frame was actually just fine. Uh, that, that framework is essentially what transformation is about, right? It's um, having uh, dissatisfaction with a current reality and, and then doing something different to create a new reality. That's just a journey. That's the hero, you know, that's a, the hero's journey, for example. So there's nothing wrong with the pain, pleasure, island conversation. And I actually like the way that my friend Tad Hargrave, marketing for hippies.com, he teaches it in terms of it's about diagnosis. It's about can you um, explain accurately what they're feeling, not to, you know, make them feel it more, right? But to just say, am I, am I, am I getting clear that you have pain in your knee there or whatever, you know, <laughs> right? Diagnosing, I mean, it doesn't have to be just about health and, and physical pain. It can be, for example, if I'm diagnosing a client's problems, like, okay, so you think that you want to get clients without having to do marketing. So the problem is not the marketing itself, I might say. The problem is your perspective about marketing and how it's been pushy. Is that right? Right. So, so, so diagnosing is what you as the service provider, as the business, as the expert can do skillfully about their symptoms. And that's great because then if you can correctly diagnose to say, okay, you're feeling this way and it's because of this reason, the root cause, the, you know, the, the foundation that isn't correct. That's why you, you create these symptoms, right? That's, and then I can help you get to here because that's what I've been working with people on. This is what my modality is about. And I think that's fine. The way that Tad Harder teaches is brilliant. What I don't like is how some other sales experts I've seen teach it, which is to use this whole pain and pleasure island thing as a way of emotional manipulation. So the way they typically teach it is you talk with the client to um, help get them feeling that pain again, right? Make them feel bad again by describing and it's like, well, isn't that terrible? Or asking them questions so they describe their trauma again and the and and how how dissatisfied they are with the current situation, so that they can get into a place of almost desperation, right? To say, I got to get out of this. I got to, you know, and and the the t typical and not just the typical sales experts, but I would say even a lot of conscious, you know, success, conscious business, conscious, you know, marketers, supposedly conscious and heart-based, are basically taking the traditional sales method and labeling it as conscious. So they say, well, we're helping them feel the pain in service to their transformation. And they use that kind of language, but it's really, if you look back, it's, oh, we're actually, our priority is in getting them to do what we want them to do, in getting them to buy so that we can have the security and the profit and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, we don't want to say that. We're saying that it's in service to them, right? Um, so you do that first, right? The typical sales, you get them to feel the pain. And then you get them to dream about, well, what's possible? And then this, the, 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 the talking about Pleasure Island is where um, you can easily get into hype. You can easily start promising things that because you're in the moment you're talking about what's possible right 
even if most of your clients haven't, or most of the people you have worked with haven't received these, these um, fantastical benefits that you're in the moment telling about what's possible here. And so you've made them feel really bad. And then you've set up a fantasy that most of the people you work with haven't been able to achieve. And then I said, well, see, I can, my business, that's what it's designed to. Let me tell you my modalities. It's designed to help you get from pain to pleasure like that, we, that we've described here. And then, so you talked about your, the, the miracle of your business. Um, and then the, it's funny. I, my, my wife is learning swimming right now. And she literally, one of the methods that she came across is literally called the miracle method of swimming. And I just, we just had a good laugh. Miracle method. So, so businesses that are kind of doing this kind of thing can easily hype themselves up. Uh, not, not that they're trying to deceive, but that they're just so in the moment of, of the priority of getting the sale, right? That, that it becomes a game for them to just try to get the sale. And so let me continue, right? Part one, get them to feel bad. Part two, hype up the possible, you know, and this is not just in the conversation. This is in a whole launch sequence in a web page. You've seen the internet marketers do it. Get you to feel bad, get you to hype, hyped up about what's possible and talk about why their solution, their program, you know, product, service is, is such a, a miracle thing of getting from, from one place to one place. And then that's part three. And then part four is to overcome objections, right? To say, well, you, know, you might be thinking that this is not impossible because of this. Well, let me tell you a story of, again, a very unlikely story of one of their very, very few clients they've worked with who happen to achieve something amazing or are you know answering objections to to your thoughts of why it couldn't work for you or why you know you know what if this doesn't happen or whatever okay objections is part four pain pleasure uh the you know your business as the boat from one island to the other and then objections clearing and and, and this demolition and then finally the fifth one is scarcity now if you buy now right here on this video if you buy right here on this video, you're going to get 40% off and you're going to get this amazing bonus that expires after you close this video. Okay. I know how to do this because I used to do this myself. That's how I was taught. That's how I thought I had to do it. I was doing it in service to you. I'm doing it in service to you. I'm not trying to manipulate you. I'm trying to do what's good for you. I know what's better for you. And this, these tactics are get you from your lazy, sit on the couch to finally take some action, get you from your, your fearful state of, you know, of, oh, I'm so scared, I'm so insecure. No, no, I want you to, I want you to take action. I want you to be empowered and act. So this is all the, the rationalizations of a conscious marketer, right? Which is, it's, it's playing the game of getting you to do what I want you to do. And so essentially, I'm, I'm putting all this, I'm bringing all this to light because conscious marketers aren't realizing what they're doing because that's what they've been taught. And so they just perpetuate this dynamic of power over their potential client, power over others. If I can use persuasion tactics in service of transformation and service of my mission and in service of your well-being, then I can get you to do what's good for you. But if we step back and look at the timeless wisdom of what is true transformation, we come to see that it's not my power over you. It's your power over yourself. I need to give you the space to make your own choices, to take responsibility for your life, even if it means my observing you make mistakes, right? That is true love, right? That is true caring. Not, I think you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to just tell you everything you should be doing. And I want you to make you, I want to make you using certain manipulation tactics, make you do it. You have become, therefore, in that situation, a lemming. You've become a puppet. You haven't become yourself. You haven't become empowered within your, yourself. And as any loving parent, I'm, I'm not a parent, but as I've read about good parenting, you know, you need to allow the child to make mistakes, right? And, and be there for them when they do. And, 
again, this is not necessarily a parent-child relationship. And even more so when you're working with adults as potential clients, you give them even more power for them to, to decide. This is why I'm so hands-off in my marketing. This is why I am doing everything I can to be as, 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 as the, the least pushy that I can. Because if I step back and you decide that you want to change, transform in the way that I might be able to help you, I want you to pursue me, not the other way around. And this is how most sales is done is we're pursuing our potential client. We're persuading them. We're getting more, you know, getting in front of their face more often with, you know, whatever marketing tactics to show up so, so many times in a way that's like, well, I've got to, you know, so, so, so let me, let me end this conversation here and this video by giving you a more authentic way of doing it, a more authentic framework. And I'll have more details in the notes of the video if you want to read the actual article that comes with this. The authentic framework for selling is essentially connection, service, and invitation. Okay? So rather than persuasion and, you know, and manipulation and power over others, we are diagnosing, we are connecting, and we are serving them in the pace that they are willing to be served. Okay, so in a sales conversation, I wouldn't, you know, try to make the person feel bad and hype up what I could help them with and then overcome objections and use scarcity because, again, that would be like working too hard, right, to, 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 to power over someone. Instead, my, com my sales conversations are about 25 to 30 minutes. And in the first 10 minutes or so, I'm working on connecting to really say, oh, so tell me more about what you're going through so I can understand, not to make you feel bad, but so I can be clear, I know where you're at with things, what's really going on. And then I will mirror back, so am I getting correct that you're seeing this happening? Okay, all right, got it. And is it true that you're also feeling this way? Oh, oh, you're not? Oh, okay, tell me more. So I'm connecting, trying to figure out what it is that they're really going through so that I can feel. It's not making them feel bad. It's making me feel with them. It's empathy. It's creating my own empathy. That's what the first part of the conversation is for. The second part of the conversation is me serving them for the next 20 minutes or, you know, for the next 15 minutes or 15 to 20 minutes, basically. Um, I am giving them a sample of what I do with my clients. I'm saying, okay, so now that I, I kind of have an understanding of where you're at, why don't we try something? Why don't we try this exercise to try to solve this problem? Let's do some writing or let's do some thinking. Let's do some brainstorming. Have you tried this before? Have you tr and, and that's what I do as a coach, as a consultant. Okay? For, if you are a healer, you might say, well, can I give you an, an example of what I might do with clients in terms of let's do a, a, a session of healing or whatever, whatever it is you do or consulting. You're showing them on the screen how to do something. How, whatever it is you do, give them a sample. In, in service to them, knowing that they may or may not ever work with you again, but I, you want to help them as much as you can in the short time that you have. And finally, in the final five minutes, I switched to saying, hey, our conversation's almost over. We're, we're coming up on time. Is there any, do you have any questions about how I work with clients? That's it. That's, that's all I say. I don't go, well, let me tell you about how great my, my, I am and my program, and let me tell you these five case studies. About, no. Do you have any questions about how I work with clients? And if they're eager, if they're like, oh, God, I can work with George. Yeah, so, so, so how, when do we start? Or how much, is, how much is the cost? Or whatever. You see, then you could just start to answer questions in service to them to help them get clarity about whether this is the right fit, whether you feel it's the right fit too. And if you feel it's really the right fit, say, I'd love to work with you, et cetera. Right? And then you invite them to then say, hey, you know, so if you want to work, I, you seem like you're really eager. The next step, if you want to take the next step, would be let's schedule our first call. So something like that. So anyway, I, I want to end this call, uh, video now, and I hope this has been helpful. Any questions you have about this process, please feel free to comment below. And there are, again, more thoughts in the notes of the video if you want to read the article itself. Blessings, and I wish you honest and fulfilling conversations with potential clients. Be well.